Hey there guys, Fireman Official here and welcome to this Age of Empires 4 video. So today I'm doing a Rus build order for a Wooden Fortress Rush. I'm really excited about this one because a lot of the other civilizations do outpost rushes, but the Rus civilization gets a Wooden Fortress which has a much higher HP and in the Feudal Age can be upgraded with various technologies which make it really really strong. It does cost more wood but we're going to factor that into the build order of course. And what we do, getting straight into the build order now, we're going to start off with the first six villagers. Um, four of them will go to sheep underneath the town centre, and you'll take two to go to build a house, the hunting cabin, and a lumber camp. The first two new villagers from the town centre will also go help those villagers build, and effectively you'll end up with four villagers on wood, because all of those builder villagers go to wood. Once the hunting cabin is built, you're going to train some scouts, uh, we kind of aim for training an extra two scouts as soon as you can, but obviously don't compromise villager production. And then, um, yeah, once you've got four villagers on wood, we're going to send the next five villagers to sheep underneath the town centre. That will give us a total of eight villagers on food. Now this number is really important, number eight, because we're going to keep villagers coming out from the town centre to go to food. Um, and we want to always aim for eight, because we're going to take villagers off of food to build certain things. But just keep in mind the kind of number at the end that you want on food is eight all right so we've got that next scout out and we're going to get some of the wolves you want to obviously get the bounty as much as you can but the real priorities at this point are going to be to bring sheep underneath your town center with one scout and the other scout you really need to find out where your opponent is because we're going to go forward very very quickly and as you can see there we just hotkeyed three of our villagers uh, ready to go forward and on the way they will build a house and um, yeah with the new scouts we're going to be getting as many sheep as many wolves as possible to get that bounty count up so yeah prioritize your scouting um, because we're just about to go forward as soon as you hit eight villagers on food that's when you take those three villagers forward as i said again the number to bear in mind is eight and when you do take those three villagers forward, you know, the villagers are going to be coming out to the town centre to food still. So again, your aim is still eight. So you're going to replace those uh, villagers you've just taken off uh, to go forward. We're going forward now and we want to see basically any particular resource we can deny. But obviously you want to focus on things like wood and gold and food and just try and harass your opponent as much as possible. Think about the placement for your first wooden fortress and make sure you have enough food coming back to the town centre. All right, looking good so far because, um, yeah, we want that magic number eight on food and we're going to get some hunt here just to make sure we get the uh, bonuses we can. There's an annoying wolf here um, attacking the villagers, but at least we're going to get the uh, bounty for it. Uh, so, yeah, just keep going, keep going and just keep an eye on your villagers there because it's quite risky to go forward like that, especially if your opponent scouts it. Um, so try to keep your scouts in front if you can and distract your opponent's scouts from seeing what you're doing. All right, now that we've got eight villagers on food, we're going to send the next four villagers from the town centre to go to stone. And that stone will really help us get some upgrades, um, which we'll go through a little bit later in the video. And yeah, those upgrades will be really useful for the wooden fortresses in the feudal age. It makes things a lot stronger for them, and uh, it's quite hard to stop sometimes. It kind of forces your opponent to go into siege in terms of rams. Now there is a couple of civilizations that I would not recommend doing this with, um, or against rather, and that is the English. I definitely wouldn't do this against the English because their villagers of course can fire arrows, so they can kind of push this away quite easily sometimes. Um, I was a bit sloppy there with the villagers, as you saw, got some TC arrow fire, but um, I, yeah, I don't really want to do this <laughs> demonstration again just for that, but yeah, you obviously don't be sloppy like I was there, and we're going to get an extra two villagers to stone now to make four in total. So at this point you can start thinking about going to the feudal age, as you can see we're keeping our scout very close to the first wooden fortress uh, to make sure that their villages are protected there. I'll often garrison, well I say pretty much always garrison, at least a scout or a weak villager in the wooden fortress to make sure that it can fire arrows because otherwise it's kind of pointless having it there, uh, at least until you hit feudal age and get the upgrades. All right, now that we've got eight villagers on food and four villagers on stone, this is actually the time where we can go to the next stage. I'm going to take four villagers from the TC food there to build the Kremlin, and that acts as a wooden fortress for your own wood villagers, which is great, uh, acts as a really good boost. And we're also going to take um, the villagers that are forward now to build the second wood wooden fortress, because we should be able to afford it about now. And as you can see, the scouts in there means that we can get the wooden fortress, the second one down. It's quite key to make sure that your second wooden fortress is within the range of the first one, because, well, I mean, if they're too far apart, then 
the first wooden fortress isn't really doing much for you at this point. Alrighty, looking good so far. So again, we're replacing the villagers on food to get up to eight in total, um, because of course we took uh, four of them away to build the Kremlin. Okay, our opponent has gone up to the feudal age, has gone up with the Chamber of Commerce for some reason, um, but that's because I'm demonstrating this against the AI. I do actually have a gameplay videos featuring my build orders on the rank ladder, so it's worth checking those out if you want to see kind of more accurate demonstrations in a way, um, under the heat of the pressure and you know, against um, human opponents. And yeah, we're looking good. So almost up to 8 on food. And once we do that, once we've got 8 on food, we're going to send... Um, new villagers to go out to wood. We're going to get the third wooden fortress and as you can see we've got plenty of stone and gold as well and we're already starting to queue up some upgrades in our wooden fortresses. Not arrowslits just yet because uh, we need feudal age for the arrowslits but we actually got castle turret for some of the wooden fortresses there and what that does is it increases the damage of the arrows by plus two. So that's hugely powerful and uh, you can get that even in dark age so it's pretty impressive. Okay, keep getting new villagers to go to wood, and the villagers that were building the Kremlin also go to wood, and we are doing fine and dandy right now, and we're going to start queuing up the arrow slits from our um, wooden fortresses, as you can see. And we're going to get a couple of scouts there garrisoned in, make sure, and um, just keep going on with the wooden fortress rush. With the addition of the arrow slits, this can become really, really powerful, and uh, of course, because now we're getting new villagers to go to wood, um, we can actually take a couple of villagers, probably three, to go forward from the wood to build even more wooden fortresses um, which is really really strong because now you can have six villagers that are forward and um, yeah need to adapt because you can see they've gone for spearmen which is often the natural response and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to queue up some more scouts just so that we have some mobility and we've got the food anyway and usually in around about now you're running out of sheep so do make sure you get another hunting cabin uh, in around your hunt or your uh, berries whichever one is kind of closest and we are also going to get the double broad axe upgrade to get the even more kind of wood access, which is which is great. And now that we've got arrow slits now, we can kind of ungarrison and just make sure we progress. Um, we also do want to think about um, getting an archery range as well for some archers to help us with the push. And back home as well, you can take some villagers to build a blacksmith. So the push is really strong. We're going to get another three villagers. Um, you know, plenty of wood coming in now. Getting another wooden fortress, and you can see we can fully upgrade them. It's also worth now to think about getting some more hunting cabins at home on a wood line, just so you can keep up with the gold income, because the arrow slits, um, you know, take some gold, and you might not have just the amount that you need for. Because obviously, you can see we've got so many wooden fortresses now that um, you know, it's difficult to keep up even with a gold amount so yeah and it's at this point really important to think about assessing the game situation if you're getting a lot of damage and you think actually you can get a lot more damage in feudal age do go for the siege engineering upgrade for rams and units in particular archers um, but yeah just go for units that counter what your opponent is doing as well but if you think actually um, you probably need to go up to the castle age don't forget to start moving villagers to go to food and gold in particular if you're having to do that, do stall out your opponent by building walls around your wooden fortresses and that enables you, when you do get up to the castle age, if you go up with the Abbey of the Trinity, that enables you to get, you know, the relics that you will have pretty much map control by this point, so the relics should all be yours. Um, you could even go for the high trade house and just get a, a monastery as a separate thing. But um, yeah. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this build order tutorial and if you did, do give the video a thumbs up. Um, it gives me a positive signal to keep doing these build orders because I have been sort of tiring out with them a little bit recently. But um, yeah, if you think this is a good idea and you're definitely benefiting from it, do let me know. Otherwise, guys, I hope you enjoyed this build order and don't forget, I do have the PDF versions available. Uh, do check out the YouTube video description if you want some more information on that. But otherwise, I shall see you guys later. Take care.